Let's create this website with Canva. If you don't already have a Canva account, you can sign up by going to canva.com or use the link in the description below. Once you sign up for your account, you'll come to a page that looks something like this. To start building a website, you'll probably see the option for websites along the top here, as well as somewhere in the middle of the page as well. If you don't, you can just search for websites in the search bar. Down below, you'll see templates for websites. There are quite a few options right here, or click on see all to see the hundreds of different website templates available with Canva. This video is sponsored by porkbun.com, the best domain registrar according to USA Today and our top domain registrar this year. For a dollar off the purchase of a new domain or off the transfer of your domain to Porkbun, use the link below or enter the code thefigco24 at checkout. Later in this video, it'll be clear why we like Porkbun so much. Let's build our website with this template. Here, click on customize this template to get started. Let's remove Franklin's photo and add a photo of me. I'll do that by dragging and dropping a photo I have saved on my computer. Let's move the photo to the left-hand side and resize it. You can make it bigger or smaller by dragging on the corners. Now, why don't I left align the name, description, as well as the button? I'm not sure I like this cream color. Why don't I change the background color to white? I'll add my name. For my description, I'll write entrepreneur, YouTuber, and personal finance expert. The text is a little bit big and is going out of the second line. Why don't I decrease the font just a little bit? If you want to change the font, there are hundreds of different font options with Canva. If you don't find the font you're looking for, you can upload any font you'd like to use with Canva. I want to change this from email me to work with me. The text doesn't all fit on one line, so what I'll have to do is ungroup this. So basically what's happening, there are several different objects that are grouped together. If you ungroup them, you can then edit each one individually. First, I'll make the rectangle a little bit larger and then stretch out the text so that it's all on one line. Now with the text all on one line, the rectangle doesn't need to be as tall. Let's have it fit the text a little bit better. With everything adjusted how I want, I'll group this again so the three different objects the rectangle, the text, and the arrow will all be adjusted or moved together. Here on the second page, let's change hello there to yo. I'll change the text along the right to say, my name is JJ. I've been an entrepreneur for over a decade now and over the last few years have focused solely on growing audiences on YouTube. I create content on several channels about marketing, entrepreneurship, and personal finance. This text is a little bit too close to the bottom of this section let's make the font a little bit smaller. I can also make this text box a little bit wider. And then now that it takes up less lines, I can actually increase the font again. Then on the next section, I'll change it to my YouTube channels. Then stretch out the text box so all the text fits on one line. If I make the text bold though, channels drops down to the second line. Let's drag it out further so everything is back on one line. While I'm thinking about this, why don't I actually put my name in bold as well? I want to highlight three different YouTube channels here, but there's only two columns. Let's just delete the second column. Then this text is a little bit wide. Why don't we narrow the text box a little bit? And this icon, I'm not going to use. Then along the left-hand side, I'm going to click on YouTube. But if you don't have something like this that says YouTube, it may just say apps and you don't have any apps yet connected. You can connect the YouTube app and then you'll be able to embed videos. I already have the links I want to use in a Word document, so I can just copy and paste them into Canva. Here's a video for this channel, The Figco. I'll make the video a little bit smaller and move it to right above where it says education and then the description. Then if I highlight all three elements, the video, the title, and then the description, I can copy and paste it. and It'll copy all three elements two additional times. Now what I want to do is create the three columns. One thing I want to do though is make sure the three columns are evenly spaced. It'd be tough to do this with all the different elements at the same time. But if I highlight videos and then click on position, and then you see here the option for space evenly horizontally, you can see it moved the video over a little bit to the right. And now there's equal spacing between the middle video and the left video and the middle video and the right video. The part that's out of alignment slightly right now is the middle title and description. So I'll move those over right below the video. So everything is now perfectly aligned from left to right. I'll change the first title to the Figco channel, copy and paste the channel link, highlight the Figco, and then click on the link option here and paste the URL. Click on done and then done again. I'll update the description to say, grow your business online. 
if I want to make sure all the text was the same font size and I wanted this just on one line, then I could highlight all three sections and decrease the font size, something like that. The next channel, greater than enough. I'll first update the video, resize the video again to back where it was, link to the channel, change the description to fix your finances. Then the third channel, beginning of a business. The font is too large to get the whole title on one line. Let's decrease the font of all three titles to something like that. Then link beginning of a business to its YouTube channel. Update the description. For this description, the text is again too long. So I'm going to shrink the three different columns. So the description is just on one line. And then lastly, update the YouTube video and resize it again. If you ever need to zoom in or zoom out, you can adjust that at the bottom of the screen. The video is now aligned with the two other videos, but the size isn't quite right. So I'll drag the corner until it aligns along the bottom as well. Then I'll drag it to align with the text below it. I think the videos are a little too close to the title above it. So I'll highlight everything together and move it down. Now in the next section, I want to promote my course for YouTube beginners. Want to start your YouTube channel? If you're not currently clicked on an element, you can hit the letter T to add additional text. Change the text to with channel launch roadmap, you'll, and then each of the columns will describe what you get with the course. The first column, choose a niche and channel name. The second column will be set up your channel correctly. And then the last column, infinite video ideas for a small channel. I could update the text below, but I think it's easier to just delete it. It looks like the last text is connected to the text above it. So I'll just delete the first two. Then I'll ungroup this then delete the lower text. Then I want to add a button that will take people to the sales page for this course. An easy way to do that is to copy the button up above and paste it here. One thing I want to add here is in 48 hours with channel launch roadmap, yo, so that someone knows that in a short amount of time, they'll be able to do all this. Now back to the button, I'll change the text to ready to launch my channel. Then to get everything back on one line, I'll ungroup all the elements, drag the rectangle and then drag and then drag the text. Resize the rectangle so it's not so tall. Then this arrow I don't want to use because we're not sending someone to the bottom of the page. Let's look for a rocket. If you don't see what you're looking for here, click on see all. And how about this one? It's a little bit bigger than we need. Let's shrink it down to the height of the text within the button. A little smaller. Move over the text. Align the rocket and the text vertically. Regroup the elements again. Then I want to update this link. It's not going to take someone to another section of this website. It's going to take someone to the sales page that describes the course in more detail. I'll type in the URL. Click on done. Then let's update this last section. Remove the image. Drag and drop this image of me recording a video. Resize the image. I'll update this text to say one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't think I like it on three lines though. If I make it wider, that helps a little bit. But one of the things that I'm noticing as I'm trying to make adjustments here is that this text box doesn't take up the same width as the text below it. And I can't change it right now. These things are grouped together like I've showed you before. I can ungroup it, then I can make this wider. And there you go. And then I can make the text actually larger again and it still fits on one line. Then I'll change this text to, if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one to grow on YouTube, email me at, and then I'll update the email address to hello at the figco.com. Here down below, you can click on add page to add another section to the website. And then along the left, instead of templates, if you click on layouts, you can select the layout for the new page. Maybe this option, if I want to add something like this. Another thing along the left-hand side, you can move up or down the different sections. If you want to delete it, you can do that as well. You can also view all the pages in grid view. Here's where you can name the different pages of the website. The first one homeworks, the second one about good as well. The third one I'll change to my channels. The fourth I'll rename to YouTube for beginners. And instead of contact, I'll change it to work with me. Also here from this view, you can add additional pages. If you want to go back to the other view, you can click on close grid view. I'm not sure I like this color. Let's update the background. Maybe this mint color or the grayish blue from up above. I think that looks better. If you're happy with how that looks 
and you're ready to publish your website, you can click on publish website along the top right hand corner. Here you can adjust if you want things to resize on mobile, as well as if you want to include a navigation menu. I want both of them checked. Let's publish this and take a look at what we built. Your website is now live. Let's take a look. Now you can see what it looks like with the navigation along the top. We have home, about, my channels, YouTube for beginners, and work with me. For this button, I don't think the link is set up properly. Let's go and fix it. Also, I never updated the name. That name is going to show up as the title of the web page. As you can see right now, college student personal website in light gray and black sleek. I'll update that to basically what I have at the top of the page. JJ Thalen, entrepreneur, YouTuber, and personal finance expert. Now I'll fix the link to this button. I don't want this to link to YouTube for beginners. I want it to link to the very bottom section to work with me. So I'll delete this. And then down below, you'll see pages in this document. Click on work with me, done. And then now the link should work. I can republish the page. Now, if I go here and refresh, you can see the title of the page now updated and the link works. But I don't want my website to have this long URL. I could delete everything after the slash and use test website tfc.my.canva.site and republish and the page will now show up at this URL. If you want to update the subdomain, this beginning part of the URL, you can do that by clicking on your icon in the top right hand corner, click on settings, and then way at the bottom, you'll see domains. Click on view, edit. Why don't we change this to JJ Thalen? Confirm that you want to make these changes. To see if it worked, click on reload. And there you go, the subdomain has now been updated. Instead of using a Canva subdomain, let me show you how to connect your own custom domain to your Canva website. Here you want to click on get a new domain. You have two options here. Bring your own domain, so a domain you purchased elsewhere, or buy a new domain from Canva. Let me show you what it looks like if you want to buy a domain directly from Canva. Let's search for a .com domain that's available. So you can see here a .com domain from Canva is $18.99 per year. Click on claim domain to purchase. Here you'll see that a domain from Canva includes hosting, an SSL certificate, and who is privacy protection, and it'll renew annually for $18.99. If instead you purchase the same .com domain from Porkbun, you'll pay $10.37 per year. If you use our link below or the code the FIGCO at checkout, you can get a dollar off the first year. Your domain purchase with Porkbun includes who is privacy protection, an SSL certificate, DNS management, web and email hosting trials, and amazing customer service by phone or email 365 days a year. If you need a domain or want to transfer your domain to Porkbun to save a dollar off the first year, don't forget to use the code the FIGCO24 at checkout. Now let's walk through how to connect a domain that you already own to Canva. Click on bring your own domain and then on continue. Enter your domain. Click on review steps to connect the domain manually. First, we need to add this A record. I'll copy the value, go to Porkbun where I purchased the domain, click on DNS. A record's already been selected for type. With Porkbun, you don't need to add the at symbol we saw just a second ago. You can just leave it blank, paste in the answer, click add. You can see that it's been added down below. If we go back to Canva, click on record added. Then we have another A record for www. The value I'll copy. For host, I'll add www, paste the answer, click on add, go back to Canva, record added, and then a text record that will verify that we own the domain. I'll copy that, then in pork bun, I'll scroll down to text record, paste, add, all three records were added, back to Canva, record added, and then click on I've updated my DNS records. Syncing your domain to the internet. DNS record updates aren't instant, as they need to sync across many servers, it's usually done within 20 minutes, but can take up to 72 hours in some cases. We'll email you when it's done. I'll click on use this domain. I'll republish the website to the new URL. Here you can see in blue, your domain's DNS record updates are being processed now. You can track its status in your domain settings. If I just copy and paste the URL, nothing's gonna show up yet. Let's click on domain settings to see what the status is. So it looks like the three records were added successfully, but down below it says your website can't be viewed yet because your domain is being verified. If we refresh our URL, it now says there's a 404 error. I'm betting it's now connected to Canva, but they wanna make sure that we own the domain before they put our website up. I'm gonna go grab a quick coffee and we'll check on this in just a little bit. It's been about an hour. Let's refresh this page and see what it tells us and our website loads at thefigcotutorials.com. 
As you saw in this tutorial, Canva is a great option for creating a one-page website. And if you already have a Canva Pro account, you can connect a custom domain for free. Now, if you wanna see how Canva compares to the best free website builders, watch the video up above, or in the video below, see how it compares to the best overall website builders. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.